Welcome to Business Influencers with Tell Radio. My ho- I'm the host, Chris Salem. Hope everyone is having a great week. We are so close to Christmas, and it's so exciting type of year. Not only time to spend with your family and friends, but also a time to reflect as you go into 2022. Here at Business Influencers, we're all about progress, not perfection. And we hope that those that are planning to make 2022 even a better year than 2021, that you've done your planning and have your goals set for 2022. If you do need assistance, feel free to reach out at us at chris at christophersalem.com here at Business Influencers with the Tal Radio Station. We have a, we're gonna have a great show today and we're gonna be talking about how did TEDx change your life? But our show is being brought to you today by Alumni Direct. They are a new social media uh, community platform dedicated to strengthening the, uh, and bringing together people from uh, your school, whether if you went to school with them to rekindle old relationships or meet people you've never met before. This is a great opportunity to connect on a genuine, authentic level. It takes all the noise uh, out of social media with no notifications that distract you, but an opportunity to come in and engage whenever is possible for you. This is an area where you can exchange and do a lot of things that you cannot do on other social media platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn. And it offers a wide variety of different affinity programs as a member to help you move your life and your business forward. Check them out at alumnidirect.com uh, com at alumnidirect.com. Again, happy holidays, everyone. We're going to be talking about how did TEDx change your life? We are here with Rosalind Khan, who's going to be talking about that today. And I know Rosalind personally. She is the author of A Message for Tomorrow's Leaders, which you're going to learn more about today. She is a phenomenal speaker. She is a educator. She's a coach. She's a, uh, again, a, a, a visionary in terms of how people see where they're going with their leadership capabilities. And you're going to learn a lot from her today when it comes to to how a TEDx talk can change the quality of your life, whether if you're a speaker and or someone receiving that message. And without further ado, we welcome Rosalind Khan to the show. Rosalind, how are you doing today? Christopher, it is so wonderful to see you. I I remember the day that we met and it it hasn't changed a bit. I remember shaking hands when you were in the Universal (laughs) hotel and you're, you're still just the same loving person that you are. And that's what I love the most about you. No matter how much fame and fortune, you're a person down at the heart and that's what makes you unique and special. So I was honored to be a guest on your show here today. Well, I'm always so grateful for you and all that you do. And it is such a pleasure to have you back on the show. I know we've been together on previous radio shows and i uh, so glad to have you on this platform with the Tal radio station uh, here People from all around the world will be listening to the show. Uh, We have a strong Indian-based listenership here, as well as throughout Asia and, of course, North America. We are so excited to hear your message today about how a TEDx uh, can change your life. So when we think about TEDx, there are probably a lot of people that are obviously familiar with TEDx uh, as we speak. You know, they probably heard the brand. and But there might be some people wondering, like, well, how can that change your life? What can you provide just to kind of start things off about what TEDx is all about and how it can really impact a person's life, whether if that's a person that's speaking or someone that is also listening? Okay, well, first of all, TEDx is a platform that that came out of the 80s or so. There's a gentleman by the name of Chris Anderson, and it used to be all these people who are extremely wealthy got together in Monterey, California and shared the wealth of the world. And he said, wait a second here. You know, not everybody in the world has millions and billions of dollars. I want to open up this access to people all over the world. And so he created this brand where anybody, regardless of where they live, could get a license to have a TEDx talk. And it opened up to communities where we were in all those same countries that you're going ahead and you're just talking about. You know, there was there was a friend of mine in an organization called Leaders Worldwide, and she found out what it took, what it was all about. And it's all about the person who's behind the 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 ownership of that license. And she said, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and have one in my Leaders Worldwide Toastmasters. And so I get to choose who I want, how I want to go ahead and make it happen. But it is, it's a platform. If we have a message that you want to change the world with that hasn't already been known. I mean, we talk about the pandemic and in my book, A Message for Tomorrow's Leaders, Kat Haber 
goes ahead and talks about there was hundreds of, of talks from NGOs to little people to big people and everyone in between that were doing them in the pandemic. So you don't have to be a celebrity, but you have to have a message. And so when I was introduced to the TED platform, I was a college teacher and I didn't know what it was all about, but I figured anytime I can listen to a speaker, take something back to my students, sign me up, let me go. And as I sat there in the audience with googly eyes and looked up on that stage, I said, oh, I want to be on that stage. And so as I pulled out of the parking lot, I ran into my friend, Tom Lenzo, and Tom said, you got to come to Greg Apodeco's house this Saturday. I'm like, okay, I'll go to Greg's house. Well, he didn't tell me I was signing up for a year. He didn't tell me each and every Saturday. And then if I wanted extra credit, I could show up on Sunday to meet some other people. I was just like, whatever. And so I showed up and I took advantage. They said there was going to be this major event in San Diego, one of the leaders of the TED organization. I met one of my mentors by the name of John Bates. He still emails me to this day. And he's so proud of where I became. I saw him up on that stage and I went up in intermission. I said, oh, it's nice to see that you, you got to open up the thing. I'd like to learn more about you. And we became such friends that, um, you know, number one is volunteering. We all think that we're going to get to the A plus to, the, to the, the start without even putting our foot in or getting our feet wet. And it was through that volunteering path. And so John had taught me that um, in order to be where you were at, you needed to speak wherever you could speak. And one time I was at a high school, an inner city high school I was teaching. I can still see the parking lot. He and his, his girlfriend at the time were, were driving up to Northern California because there was a speech he could do. And he talked about all the animal clubs and you've got to get your experience speaking. But one of the groups that helps you in the speaking is the Toastmasters group. Many people say, oh, that's just Toastmasters. But, you know, a friend of mine says, if you become the world leader of public speaking, that can be a six figure income. And, you know, we all know about speaking, but so helping us move along. I get, on that, I get on that volunteer path. John helps me with the person in the group get up and give her speech, talking about my favorite dogs. It was the, the trip to the veterinarian that showed the woman that she was the problem. It was not the dog. That she had an incident that, that happened to her in college where she was raped. And the dog brought her to this veterinarian, this Indian doctor, who went ahead and said, it's, it's you that need the help. And I was the one that said, you need to tell that story being a person who loves dogs greatly. But it's like every situation that I go to, people will say, next, let's introduce Rosalind Khan, a three-time TEDx speaker. And, you know, it's just opened up the world for me. In this last year, I had spoke on 11 different countries via Zoom, but there's still 11 countries that I never would have gotten for if it weren't for the pandemic. So it's not all bad news that we're in our house. It's just opened up so many different doors. I got an award as a humanitarian for my interest in advocating for youth. I know how much you care about your son. Yes. Um, you know, just getting to kids recognition. I was, you know, talking about Toastmasters. Another door that opened up for me is I recently submitted an article to a magazine and you haven't heard this yet, but the article was picked up by Toastmasters and they said, we'd like to run this on that book that's sitting here by the side. And talk about a couple stories that that change people's lives and so it's going to visit 147 countries and 137,000 people are going to get the chance to read your stories and we we know who leaders are because the two stories i picked up that i wanted to be in the book one is of a 14 year old boy, boy whose name is aj stunts who is a stunt car rider but more than a stunt car rider this kid is a humanitarian I just spoke to his mother yesterday. When I sent the text, I said I needed a call. She had me on the phone right away. And she said he's, he's working with one of his dearest mentors that would go straight to your heart, that works through the inner city kids of San Francisco. And he helps motivate these kids to get outside of themselves and, and do things. And AJ wants to give other people the limelight. And so as they're hunkering down of the things they can't do, they said, nope, we're going to this guy's thing and we're going to help those kids in the inner city because they're the ones that need the most. How many kids do you know who are, you, you've seen plenty of kids on those, those platforms of speakers and they're all about speaking, but how many of them would equal the heart of that young kid I told you about? Mm. Slim and far in between. Yeah, absolutely. You know, slim and far in between. And it's, it's, it's through that, that when they do these speaking platforms, they, they give me the golden seal of approval. Who do you think should be on the stage, Ross? 
want to we want to take your your judgment of who you think and so it's on the on the the leaders of uh, world leaders that i was on that i was helping recognize young kids if there was thousands or hundreds of kids who applied and if i said someone should be on that platform my kids were there i'm speaking on an event of gratitude and she said we got 52 speakers Rosalind, but i'll give you five if you know five people that you think should be on the stage i'm like what is this you know <laughs> i got the lucky five i was one of seven kids and so literally back to the question anybody can go ahead and, and give a talk but ted talk is just a little bit different you want to have a message that's going to change people's lives that they haven't already heard of you want to get a coach you can spend tens of thousands of dollars or you can talk to me and i won't cost you millions to help you put that speech together to put the emphasis to connect you with the right people who will say oh this person was recommended by you let's let's go ahead and give them a, give them a shot and um it can take an ordinary life and make it an extraordinary life it's you know they say that going ahead and writing a book gives you one element of credibility well being a ted speaker on a ted stage gives you a whole completely other set of credibility there was a, a gentleman that i met and when i go to practice a speech anybody's the audience i was at a political event i'll, I'll leave the name of the party out but I walked up to this guy and I said, would you mind listening? I got this big speech that I'm going ahead and I'm practicing. Would you just go ahead and listen to it for me? And um, this person ended up becoming a client later on that I got to coach when he was going ahead and giving a speech to the Cheesecake Factory as the executive director of the mission statement that they had. And he said, when he gave that speech, there were tears in members of the eyes as they listened to that. And that is what I can do with people and helping them to create those talks and create those speeches. So I'm sure you have more questions. Well, I do. And, and I and I think that, you know, it's such, what you talked about TEDx again, that opportunity to really impact the world with the message that gets them to think about what that means to him or her or collectively together as human beings that, you, you know, that the listener gets the opportunity to draw their own conclusion and you get that platform to be that voice perhaps for them in helping them move their businesses or lives or a combination thereof forward. What would you say that, you know, you know, you knew at some point that this was a platform that you desired, what, what, what do you feel, what else does it take? You know, Rosalind, when you say, if somebody's listening to this and they're aspiring to be like, I want to be a TEDx talker, I want to get on there, but you know, why are they going to choose me? Why, you know, why, why is my message, so it's, important. It's, it's Maybe something that, yeah. It's something that's got to be unique and off off the path. And I'll give you my three examples of the three talks that I've gone ahead and given. The first one was called um, coming. The first one was called. Um, I always do this. It was about taking my students to the theater and how it changed the way they learned English. And you think about, you know, English as a second language. Well, why? What is that different? My my greatest talent is telling stories. And so when I went to an event that, that John had led, and it was for people who wanted to get on the TED stage, and, and I got up and I spoke on the stage, and I talked about the students' lives I had changed. And I, and I began like this, you know, I'm a teacher who's not an ordinary teacher, but I take my students in my class and they become a family. And so there's one gentleman I remembered, an, an Asian gentleman, who came to class and his hand was over his nose and there was blood going ahead and coming out of it. And he said, teacher, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I got a nosebleed. Is, is it okay if, I, if I, I miss class today? And I'm like, please, please, you know, Kaiser's just up the street, just, just, just head on up there. And that was a man of an Asian descendancy. There was another student, I was at Santa Monica College and he came up to me and his head was down and he was very somber and he said, teacher um something happened yesterday and um my sister was off at target and this person came up and shot her and she died and i looked up at him and i said you know i feel your pain i remember when i was in college and i got the notice that my father had a major heart attack and i took a tape recorder with me to my classes so i could go ahead and make sure that i didn't miss out and when my father showed up at my graduation, it was the greatest thing that ever could have happened. And then, then there was the story of Tatiana. 
Tatiana was a student who came from Slovenia, the country that's that's changed many, many names at this particular time. And I had my students go out and do volunteer work to learn the English language. And she came into class one day and she said, teacher, 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 you never guess, guess what? I gave out Bibles and sack lunches. I met people from all over the world. It was the best thing that ever could have happened to me. And what you hear in each of these stories are, are pictures of people that you can imagine the depth of their life, what made them special. And I'm a humble human being. I just have a heart that cares about other people. When I got up on that stage and I told that story, people wanted to hear because nowadays there's so many horrible stories that we hear about teachers. We don't even need to go on those stories. And, and you know what I mean, but to the organizer at the time, that was the message they wanted to hear. And I think that was 2015 or so. Um, and part of the experience I had of being part of the TED crew is I met some of the different organizers. And one of them connected me and said, hey, Rosalind, we, we heard that great speech you gave, you wanna give another one. And so I had an opportunity and this one was called, um, it was the one I gave on scoliosis. It was how growing up in a body cat or having, it was called coming around the curve on how that made me a more compassionate human being. And I like to tell people, you know, when I finished that speech on scoliosis, what it meant to me, I thought I could be a speaker talking about scoliosis to kids. Well, there are thousands and millions, never would have crossed the pavement. But to Ted at that time, it took a combination of facts and stories. And I said, stories are my gift. And so I had a, a chart with a, a the, the x-ray, and I combined that with the, the percentages of the number of people who came down with that, how rare it was, what my, my percentage was. And I give you these examples because they're taking something that's common knowledge and turning it on its head. What is it that you know? I mean, I'm gonna look at you, Christopher, and I'm gonna say, what I like and respect about you is the admiration that you have for your child. There are countless people who are speakers who travel all over the world, but there's not many of them with the passion that you have for kids. Were you raised by a father who didn't make time for you? Sure was. And uh, that, you know, what, what inspired me to co-found Empowered Fathers in Action, which is our 501c3 organization. So, yes. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's those stories. And I, I think you, you say it with a huge smile on your face. You say it with the, the biggest smile. And when you hit the, when you hit the soul of someone, I just got off the phone with, with interviewing a young lady whose name is Brie Golette. She is Miss US. And her pact is to help first responders and their families they leave behind. And when you got up and you spoke about, you know, your passion for the kids and she got up and she spoke about the first responders and how everyone helps everyone. It's like you turn up that energy and it just goes on fire. So I'm gonna ask people in the audience who are listening, what do you care about? What if I asked you that question, lights you up like a, a cannonball and you become an explosion because you wanna tell people about that experience? That's probably something that, that might be worthy of, of a TED experience. A TED yeah, talk. I agree. And I love the fact that what you said, Rosalind, is about people relate and understand stories because it's something they can relate to. They feel like that, you know, that that was me or I, I can relate to that. And and that is so important in a TED, TED talk. And then everything that you do, what you take from that TED talk, talk about, again, you know, that that, that again, somebody thinking about, Maybe do I have what it takes to be a TED, uh, TEDx speaker about, can they tell a story? Is there something? Yeah, there's, again, there's, there's, there, there is, there is a fact about, about storytelling, you know, John Bates in one of the seminars I had gone to said facts tell and stories sell. Um, there's storyteller groups, but you know, the big organization, a colleague of mine, whose name is Anna Marie Bennett Wenacor, and I'm sure she probably sent you out some information. She's my assistant. She said she'd gone to a, a workshop about getting on the TED stage. And they said, Toastmasters. Toastmasters is, is a really good forum for you to go ahead and practice those, those speaking skills. I was in a professional organization that uh, Clinton Swain had frontier training and he had a number of people in there and there was a whole craft about telling the story 
about bringing people in, leaving them on that cliffhanger on the edge of the chair. And then Toastmaster teaches you structure, it teaches you organization, it teaches you how to take feedback and how to use that feedback to go ahead and take you to the next level. You know, case on point, I was I was talking to the, the Miss USA, Miss US, and, and kept making that mistake. And I said, well, I'm just putting where you're going to be, sweetie. Don't don't worry about it. You're going to be Miss USA one day. You, you'll be there. And you'll say, Rosalind, help me get there. But um, we, we were talking about, you know, take number one. And, and, you know, you know, the world of show business. There's take number one, number two, number three. So how long is this going to take? It's going to take about a half an hour. And I, I listened to the first one. And I said, sweetheart. You got to pump it up a little bit. We're excited. This is this is the Oprah show you're on. Give it all to me. And, you know, with that that little bit of encouragement, we, we took from level A to level 28 A. And, and that's what a coach can do for you. They can they can spark that flame that turns into a, a wildfire. And bring it out. Yes, no question about it. And like you said, that when it, even when it comes to TEDx talks, there are coaches like yourself to help people in those areas to really, to really, you know, really believe in what they're going to say is going to impact other people that would be listening live or when things were more or less live before COVID, but, but nonetheless that people will be listening and the impact that that story or your story or whatever story you're using, you know, it could help that person listening. You know, it's, it's funny. I remember I was working with Kat and there was a gentleman named Duran Gazit who had these, creations he created in the wilderness and there was a speaker who climbed up on this mountain and, and Kat says to the guy you need to go work with Rosalind you, you're, you're, you're just too low and I'm like okay you know you, you, you've got to say it like you know I got to the mountaintop and I looked out and oh my lord you can't believe what we saw out there and it was you know just just you know getting people to 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 visualize that scene to to bring it to life to bring it to words so people can go ahead and and imagine that and i sorry to jump topics there was a student who gave a speech on a subject that's near to dear to me and that's the fact of suicide in today's climate and as she drew to the conclusion of her persuasive speech she says you never know which person you talk to, of who you reached out to, you could be the person that saves their life. And I said, boy, that's that's a speech that's got a platform that needs to be heard. And I hope if you're listening to this speech and it's the holiday, that you spend the time and you walk up to a stranger and just give them a compliment. You may be the person who saves their life. So true. So true. Especially around this time frame, you know, when the people tend to get sentimental and a little sensitive, uh, so impactful what you just shared. What, what could you recommend to others that are listening right now and those that would be listening later, Rosalind, how a TEDx talk can really change their life for well, the better? You know, a, a lot of people, it's not the money that we make. It's not the jewels that we that we own. It's not the knickknacks in our house. But to some, it's it's the feeling to know that you've gone ahead and you've had a goal and you went ahead and established that. You know, you can't specifically say, I'm going to sell my business or I'm going to sell my book or I'm going to sell who I am. But you can certainly say when it's there, let me tell you about the person who I was before. Let me tell you about the person who I went ahead and became. And I remember going there and you know, going on Saturdays and going on Sundays and driving in that car and like, why am I spending all this time? I can't go to this. I can't go to that. And I can't go to this. And when it was all done and over with, the guy who was in charge of it gave me six months of coaching free. And you know what coaching is all about. And I, I wrote down that I was going to speak on the TED stage and I was going to write my book. And, you know, as each of those things clicked off the list that I'd gone ahead and said in that imaginary world that you create a list of what, what's, what's not on the table right now. And he's been so much behind me, so much, you know, it's, it's the people that you meet that open up doors and opportunities that you never thought would have been possible. Um, you know, this, this lady, Kat Haber and both John were both in my, my books and, you know, countless times, you know, I will refer millions of people to Kat and, you know, this other person wanted to find out something about the environment. And I said, well, you got to talk to her. She opened up, you know, her, her lodging to Doran and this, that, and the other. 
And it's just like the friendship that you and I have. You know, the two of us were sitting here talking in a conversation the other day. You've seen where I've come. I've seen where you've gone. And, you know, I'm so so honored that you would write a forward in my book. And I, I look at you and think about all the things that you're doing and just the admiration and the appreciation that you give back to me. It's, it's people. And there was a person whose name was Kurt Krager. I was on a platform of the International Men's Celebration. And he taught this really important key. And wherever you are, I want to give you a gift. And it was one he gave to me. And he said, put your hands together. And I want you to go ahead and say, take a deep breath and go blessings in and blessings out. And blessings in and blessings out. And as you do this to each person that you pass, the ones who upset you and the ones that anger you, instead of screaming and hollering, if we bless people, we can literally make the world a better place. There are thousands of people who apply to that, Ted, and not everyone goes ahead and makes it. But if it's something you wanna do, find someone that you can work with that matches your personality, that matches who you are and work with them. It doesn't need to cost millions and trillions of dollars. And even if you get that speech and it doesn't take you there, it can open up other doors and opportunities that you might never have imagined that would have ever been open. I mean, never did I imagine that I was gonna be a TED speaker on the TED stage. Never did I imagine in the pandemic that I would have gone ahead and done close to nearly a hundred speeches, been in 11 countries. And here we are in January, starting my own TV show. Rosalind Khan, living life at its best on Chow Entertainment. Whoever would have thought that? But it's, you know, one door just goes ahead and goes Leads to the to other. another. To the other, to the other. And you never know which door is going to open for you. Well, that is wonderful. I mean, I love everything that has transpired, you know, as a result of everything you've done when, in your career, how it led to the TEDx stages. And, you know, then books and, and now a TV show and all the great things that you're doing. I like to leave this time. You've shared so much wisdom and insight to really impact people in such a powerful way on this show to take action and looking at a TEDx and how it can change not only the quality of their life, but more importantly, that it impacts other people through their message, that everybody has a valuable message to share. If you can share a little bit about, you know, how people can get to know Rosalind Khan where to reach out to you, where they can get their hands on your book, a message for uh, tomorrow's leaders and so on and information about your TV show. Certainly, okay. Well, what's really great about this, this platform here is we get to see my spelling of my name and the beauty of me in social media is I like to keep life really simple. So you can, my book is called A Message for Tomorrow's Leaders. It has people like, like Chris Salem in there and 46 individuals from 14 to, to 88. And the story is about the pandemic, the protests, and the riots. So if you go to Amazon and you put in Rosalind Khan, you will see a message for tomorrow's leader, which I just found out this last week is going to be going international around the world. Toastmasters International liked an article that I'd written and offered to have my story in their magazine. So if you remember, Congratulations. you can look for that coming up this spring. Um, if you go to Amazon, I have another couple books. One of them is called Dogs and Roses, How to Reduce Stress and Anxiety in Today's Troubled Times. It's got cute little pictures of beautiful dogs and lovely roses and how it is that we make the world a better place. Kind of a, a like water for chocolate, except it's, it's pictures and cute little sayings. And then my first book is called Random Acts of Kindness for Changing the World. So if you go to Amazon, you'll find me there. If you go to LinkedIn, I have a post nearly almost every day. I think Tuesday is the quote day, the, the, the quote from my book. And then Thursday, I'll give you a tip on speaking. I'm a regular on, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on Facebook. I have a professional speaking page, which is called Coaching and Professional Speaking. You'll see me on the NGO stage. Yes, that's Rosalind on the NGO stage. Um, and that's the one that you want to look for in the background. And, and sign up and follow me on, the, on YouTube. I've got some, some great videos and you're going to be amazed when you see what's coming up there. Ray Abara from the, the Shark great. Tank, is, he is, he's one of the people that, I, that I, I've interviewed. Um, so many people just like yourself going to be on yeah. there and there's so many names. It's hard to keep track of them all. I have a webpage with the same name, rosalindcon.com. 
And you can reach out to me, send me a message, and I'd be love to, to help you out. Um, you know, send, send me a message and there's a, there's a free gift that I'll, I'll send to you. And it's, it's a Fabulous. guide to speaking tips and just, just mention you were on Chris's show and you're interested in those speaking tips and I will give you a free gift. Well, Rosalind, thank you so much for sharing this again, taking time out of your busy schedule to be with us here today on business influencers. We highly encourage all the listeners uh, to this show and those that will be listening later to reach out to Rosalind, get to know her, get, pick up a copy of her latest book. Uh, matter of fact, pick up a copy of all of her books and reach out to her direct for that free gift offer that she had mentioned. Again, this is somebody that you uh, should get to know when it comes to really you know, learning how to get on a TEDx stage amongst other things that she can do to help you. So Rosalind, thank you again. And we want to thank listeners each and every week joining us here at Business Influencers. Uh, the show uh, wouldn't be where it is today if it wasn't for you. This show is designed around you to really move your business and your personal life to the next level. This is all about creating influence to empower others to do more in their business and in their personal lives. And we're here to provide uh, experts like Rosalind that come in to share their words of wisdom, insights that can help you to move that portion of your business forward. Thank you, everybody. We want to wish everybody a joyous, happy holiday season and a wonderful new year. We'll see you next week, right before the new year. So we will have another show. And again, uh, feel free to follow us here on Tell Radio as well as on Spotify and YouTube here at Business Influencers. Till then, have a great day, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you.